This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the act of worship and praise. Blessings are showered on all who seek God. Come and rejoice. God has given you such love and mercy. Let us join in the call to worship. Open your hearts to God's loving mercy. Lord, come in your heart this day. Having received God's mercy, bring that love to others. Feel your spirits filled with the goodness of God. Lord, who lifts us up, reside in our hearts today. Help us to listen closely for your word to us. Remind us that you are always with us throughout all of our lives. Give us confidence in your presence so that we may go into your world ready to witness to your love through our works and our deeds. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll now have the United Choir.
We will now um, read our first scripture reading, which is Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 16. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her called by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If, it, if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of, of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus, have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you Lord have called forth your praise. This is the word of God for the people of God. We will now have a harvest poem read by Brother Rashad. servant, not your master. Suddenly, God will be working for you instead of you working for God. Remember, God's delays are not God's denials. God's timing is perfect. Patience is what we need in prayer. 
when you are not right, God says, grow. Mm -hmm. The selfish person has to grow in unselfishness. The cautious person must grow in courage. The timid person must grow in confidence. The dominating person must grow in sensitivity. The critical person must grow in tolerance. The negative person must grow in positive attitudes. The pleasure-seeking person must grow in compassion for suffering people. When everything is all right, God says, go. Then miracles happen. A hopeless alcoholic is set free. A drug addict finds release. A doubter becomes as a child in his belief. Diseased tissue responds to treatment, and healing begins. The door to your dreams suddenly swings open, and there stands God saying, go. Thank you. We will now um, be blessed again by the United Choir.
beautiful sounds. Good morning, church. Thank you for having me here. It's always an honor delivering a message from God. And of course, I want to thank Reverend Dr. Hamilton, our shepherd here at North. Can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> you know, going through this pandemic has not been easy, and um, he has been steadfast in his calling and in his purpose. And also, I would like to give my early birthday shout out. <laughs> if we had time, I would sing, but we don't have time. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy Spirit, take over. Take over so I can deliver your word. Dear God, I pray and ask that this message is received and helps transform your people. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. I pray you are all able to experience God's supernatural peace today, especially peace in your mind. As I was just saying, there's been so much going on, so much chaos and grief in the world, and inner peace is still available for us from God. Shalom is a Hebrew word, and in addition to meaning peace, it means harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, tranquility, and can also be used to say hello and goodbye. Rosh Hashanah began this past Friday, and it ends this evening. This is the beginning of the Jews' New Year, and during Rosh Hashanah, their focus is on repentance and atonement. How many of you remember the Hebrew name for Jesus? Say it louder. <laughs> Yeshua. Yes, Yeshua. Uh, when I went to Israel last year, I heard that over and over again, and it really resonated with me. Um, and I really began to fall in love with that name. Of course, Jesus is just as powerful, but there is something so peaceful about Yeshua. There, I, I remember feeling the peace of God when, whenever I would hear the word Yeshua. I felt like I was able to breathe better. I felt like I could excel. I felt like I could release my worries, my fears. Philippians 4, 7 literally comes alive for me when I hear Yeshua. I believe this is the same kind of peace that comes over us when we're living in the calling that God has placed on our lives. So we see, going back to Matthew chapter 21, 21, verses 6 through 11. Please feel free to open up your Bibles if you have them. So Jesus was going into Jerusalem on a donkey to finish the calling that God placed on his life. Jesus riding the donkey was almost like an announcement of peace. Jesus was at peace with his purpose and was ready to complete his final mission to do the most sacrificial thing known to mankind. So I ask you to think about today. Do you understand the calling that has been placed on your life? Do you understand your purpose? Do you understand the gifts and power that you possess from God? I really want to encourage you to take notes today, whether it's in your phone or on paper. I'm going to be sharing with you some practical ways to complete your calling. No matter your age, no matter your abilities, as long as you are still breathing and not in a vegetative state, you are still called to do something. 
So I'm going to share three ways to complete the calling God has placed on your life. Number one, do it even if you are scared. Do it even if you are scared. Many times I believe we are called to do things that may feel unfamiliar. They may feel uncomfortable. It's out of our comfort zone. And yet I believe God calls us to step out of our comfort zone. We have to embrace change, even if that feels scary. We have to embrace the unknown. I want to go quickly to a story in the Bible about Peter. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to read all of it because I know most people are familiar with this story. Um, I'm just going to look at verses 29 through 30, and it's Matthew 14 if you want to turn to your Bible. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus, but when he looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. Then he said, faint heart, what got into you? Of course, as we know, Peter was scared when he got out of the boat. And then he became nervous walking on water. And Jesus was there to help him. Jesus didn't hesitate. And it is the same for us. Even if something might go wrong, even if we're met with adversities, challenges, Jesus is there to catch us and will not allow us to drown. Do you believe that? <laughs> Thank you. I, I, even though we have on masks, I, I want you all to talk back to me. <laughs> and for those who are listening at home, I pray that you are also talking back to me through the screen. So when I feel nervous, and nervous, nervousness is normal, it is natural, and we have to push ourselves. I personally push myself to get back in connection with God and to be in prayer. I cannot allow the enemy to make me doubt myself, make me step out of my purpose or paralyze me in the middle of my purpose. Jesus did not arrive in Jerusalem for me to walk in fear. Even though Jesus was entering Jerusalem as king, I'm sure it wasn't completely easy for him because he knew what was going to happen in Jerusalem. And yes, he went, and yet he went forward. We thank you, Father, for your bravery, for your courage. Because if you didn't enter Jerusalem, there would be no cross. I might still be in bondage. Those passions, ideas, visions that you have to help people, to help others, to help the world, come from God. And we are called to do it even if we're scared. I believe some of you may have a vision to write a book, to start a ministry, to launch a business, or even to go back to school. And even if you don't know where to start, don't be afraid to reach out for assistance, for help. There are a lot of resources out there. One of my favorite scriptures I want us to be mindful of is, God did not give us a spirit of fear. What did he give us instead? <laughs> Amen. Can we all say that together? Power, love, and sound mind. Sometimes when we memorize scripture, we forget to really meditate on it and what it really means. Next, take out your notes. <laughs> Go through your wilderness season and don't turn back. So this is point number two. Go through your wilderness season and don't turn back. We all know Jesus went through his wilderness season and was tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And of course he didn't give in. He refused every temptation. 
And then if you can recall, the Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years. Now, I'm not saying that you all may be going through your challenges or trials for 40 years. <laughs> I just want to remind you that it is a journey. It is a promise. It is a process to get to the promised land. To the place where you can complete your calling. To the place where you will feel complete and whole simply due to God's love. If we look at Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 15, and I'm just going to read that briefly. In the desert and the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if, we only, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites in the evening, you know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat me, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. I'm skipping down to 14. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they do not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. So the main thing I want you to be mindful of is how much the Israelites complained and grumbled. And even at one point, they desired to go back and return to Egypt, where they were in slavery. One of my favorite therapist pastors, Dr. Kalita Forb, often says, sometimes dysfunction is more comfortable than the unknown which is why sometimes people would rather go back to their Egypts in bondage. I'm gonna say that again. Sometimes this function is more comfortable than the unknown, which is why sometimes people would rather go back to being in bondage. That's a hard one to swallow, I'm sure. The dysfunctions of their life that didn't allow God to fully heal them. They needed to be fully healed in order to arrive to the promised land. But to fully heal and function in your calling, you have to let go of your Egypts and go through the wilderness season. Yes. I want you to think about what might be distracting you from fulfilling your purpose, your calling, whether it's fears, doubts, unhealthy relationships with friends, with others, family members, overworking. We have to kill our fleshly desires daily. It is essential. I encourage you all later to write down some potential distractions in your quiet time. Ask God to deliver you from these things. I believe he can and will. And it is okay to get an accountability partner or two when you're going through difficult times, when you're being tempted. 
We have to go through this wilderness season to complete your calling. Number three is invest yourself fully in your purpose. Invest yourself fully in your purpose. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was fully invested in his purpose and, of course, made significant sacrifices to fulfill his calling. By the time Jesus was crucified on the cross, I believe he had given everything he had to serve others. There's a concept called die empty. I believe Jesus died empty. I know for a fact he did, actually. I will say that confidently. The concept of dying empty basically means everything that God has placed on the inside of you needs to be poured out to serve others on earth. I'm going to say that again, just in case if it's new for some people. The concept of dying empty means that everything that God has given you, your gifts, your wisdom, your knowledge, needs to be poured back out into earth to serve other people. Here's another example. I believe Chadwick Boseman, also known as the Black Panther, is an example of a human being that died empty. Just recently, he was only 43. According to USA Today, Chadwick was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer in 2016 and battled with it for the last four years as it progressed to stage four. A true fighter, Chadwick persevered through it all and filmed several films during and between countless surgeries and chemotherapy. Even though he was dying of cancer, he was fully invested and committed to his calling and entertaining the world as an actor. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. May he rest in peace. Yeshua gave everything he had to his disciples and to everyone he came in contact with. He healed so many, provided resources, wisdom, poured out his grace, love, mercy, and so much more. Of course, none of us will ever be as perfect as Jesus, and yet we should still desire for Jesus to tell us, well done, my good and faithful servant, when it is time to transition. I know I'm hoping that I will hear those words from him. Let us always be mindful and focus on the fact that Jesus died empty. For us, of course, and he needs us to do this as well. I just want to recall again the three ways to complete your calling. Maybe I should quiz you all. Do you guys remember number one? Yes, thank you. Do it even if you're scared. Number two. Amen. Go through your wilderness season and don't turn back. And number three. Yes. Invest yourself fully, fully in your purpose. Our time on earth is for a greater purpose. I truly, truly believe we all have the potential answer to solve a problem on earth, just like Jesus. You are all destined for the promised land. I encourage you all to keep fighting, to move forward, stay connected to God, and completely trust him. Don't give in. You have come too far. You are victorious through Jesus. You are a child of God. You have the power, and you have authority to access his power. I know we're not doing an altar call, but I just want to do a quick prayer in your seat. Um, if you are at home, you can sit, you can kneel. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you for your, their callings. 
that you have placed on their life. We thank you for their purpose, dear God. Continue to go to them. Continue to go to your people and reveal your glory on them, dear God. Help them to access their abilities. Give them the confidence that they need. We cancel out fear. We cancel out worries. We cancel out doubts over your people, dear God. Help them, dear God. Help them to deliver them from any issues that they're going through. For those who are going through their wilderness season, dear God, help them know that you are always with them. You are always with them, and you will never leave them nor forsake them. In your name we pray. Amen. Shalom. We will next be blessed again by the United Choir. And now the benefit. 
addiction. Thanks, Stan. Stand firm in the spirit, strive side by side, and live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Go in peace. Amen.